so what was the the actual intervention you know do, do you do you remember the 12 sessions or, the 12 or thereabouts sessions. yeah let, let's see how uh, good my um, memory is so, um... So yes, we have uh, module one was a uh, week one, uh, introduction to compassion and the tricky brain. Uh, so the aim of that week uh, was to help individuals understand uh, the experience of compassion, uh, the definition of compassion, fears they may have towards compassion, um, and the beginning of the psychoeducation around the evolved mind and how it functions. Um, so the session exercises were particularly large group discussions, compassionate imagery, and we started introducing uh, breathing exercises. And there was psychoeducation around the breathing exercises and uh, how just the simple mind slowing down, body slowing down uh, can be efficient. And then when we started to get into model two, module two, we started every session with uh, a breathing exercise to set ourselves up for the session. And every session also ended with a imagery technique as well. So module two was the three types of emotion. So that was working with our body to support our mind. So we introduced the evolutionary functional analysis of emotion um, to assist individuals to really understand the nature and function of threat-based emotions, um, drive-based emotions, um, and then soothing-based emotions, um, and starting to help participants to consider compassion as a motive. Um, we, in that session, we once again did some large group discussions, uh, which as I was saying is very important to be working in real time um, with that experience of compassion. We did the breathing exercises again to close the session and we viewed the Stuart video, uh, which was a um, lovely uh, image of how compassion can be useful um, in relation to the uh, three types of um, emotions that we all have. Um, then module three was the learning to notice what our mind does. So that's um, attention training and mindfulness. So we start to introduce participants to the nature and function of attention. So how to pay attention and what our mind does and how our mind hones in on threat and danger and how we can start un understanding this um, with the introduction to mindfulness-based practices. And when our mind does this, starting to be playful with our thoughts, um, start to really tune into awareness and attention to our thoughts. Uh, so... In this one, we did some intuitive eating exercises uh, and starting to connect with mindfulness-based skills, so some grounding, mind-body awareness, breathing, uh, the use of posture. And as I say that, I'm like, oh, I need to put my shoulders back. Um, facial expressions, voice tones, um, emotions, um, and how to move the attention. Uh, that's a fun one that participants really like that vocal tone um, and noticing how they feel after um, having a neutral voice saying hello to themselves and then having a um, happy or a compassionate voice say that as well. Um, so that's a fun exercise that they really enjoy. Um, then in module four, we do um, exploring safety, safeness and compassion from others. So the aim of this one is to introduce individuals to the concept of safeness um, and as an exploratory function and how it dif differs from safety as a threat based um, emotion or um, a fear there. Uh, we're starting to explore here um, how it feels to experience compassion from others. And we're really starting to discuss here how our relationships are important to us and the support, um, sorry, those relationships are important and how they support a range of physical, 
for, of physiological processes within us. So um, how connection and cultivating care um, can help us uh, when we have times of struggles and we don't feel um, safe to explore. So in this one, um, we are doing those group discussions, doing those breathing techniques, and actually adding a compassionate imagery here, um, starting to build a compassionate other and build a safe place imagery as well. So people have a base to go back to um, and to bring to mind when we start going down kind of a very um, heavy um, next couple of sessions, right? So it's uh, really setting people up to have a safe base in their mind. Then module five, we start uh, covering the compassionate self. So we introduce participants to the nature and concept of the compassionate self, uh, which includes the three key qualities, which is wisdom, strength, and commitment. Um, and these qualities are described um, and defined in relation to the session and how we can build and use that within our lives. Um, so we start to begin by cultivating our compassionate self. We start embodying the compassionate self and seeing that we have all these roles in our lives and the compassionate self, you know, we might not feel it to start off with, but we can just kind of like, let's fake it till we make it. And let's, what would our compassionate self feel like? How does it walk? How does it speak? Uh, and starting to really practice what that compassionate self embodiment really is. And so there um, we we have my three favorites. This is, uh, you know, the nature of the multiple selves as patterns of the mind and uh, the compassion engagement. So I'm um, starting to introduce members to the concept of uh, multiplicity, having multiple selves and that have a particular focus on threat-based emotions. So we specifically in this session uh, start getting into more depth with the angry self, anxious self and sad self uh, and talking about um, where these emotions separately um, feel, sit within us, what they want us to do, um, how they sound uh, and really getting into um, the differences between them but then the relationships between them. So how angry self feels or thinks about anxious self and sad self. Uh, and then we also do a compassionate self. So we do an imagery technique of generating that compassionate self and how the compassionate self might like to respond to the angry self and what it might like to do and say um, and how to cultivate our compassionate self. So um, once again, these large group discussions, breathing exercises and compassionate imagery uh, with also the practicing of multiplicity um, and responses between those. Um, then working with self-criticism. So now we're starting to um, get into kind of shame and self-criticism. So self-criticism is first in module seven. Um, and this module we're aiming to help participants uh, understand the forms and functions of self-criticism. The fact that it is designed as a function that's been created for us, not by us, and sometimes uh, it can be quite harmful, um, but it actually has a function and a purpose. So we start to ex explore what it could be and um, times that we would like to actually, you know, reduce its uh, power within our lives, right? Um, and how to uh, talk to self-criticism. So we use the compassionate self to work with disappointment, setbacks and rejection. Um, and a great one here is reminding ourselves that through compassionate practices, uh, it's not saying that we'll never fail again, but when we fail, we'll be able to respond to ourselves in a more, um, with reassurance, yeah? Um, Particularly, this is what I was talking about in response to that survey. So if we want to change our health behaviours, change up our nutrition, try something new, no matter what that looks like um, for each other, um, we, when we have setbacks, it's about how we're responding, not throwing baby out with the bath 
water, not through a sense of self-criticism, but in a sense of common humanity of it's like, hey, you know, um, tomorrow's a new day of, um, and being kinder or um, soothing ourselves, right? So then we get to uh, the shame, uh, working with shame and guilt. So we're starting in this module eight to help individuals to understand uh, the evolution of threat, driving and soothing in, in response to, as a response to social relationships. So we're starting to talk about the social rank systems and emotions of shame, both external and internal, um, and how that differs to humiliation and guilt. Um, this is a particular one I notice um, when we respond to health engaging behaviors, we'll say, oh, I feel really guilty that I ate that, or I feel really guilty that I didn't go to the gym today. Well, is that guilt or is that shame? And so we actually start to um, unpack the differences here and which systems are um, being um, activated um, with those emotions. But yeah, module nine, um, we went into deepening compassion for the self now. Um, so we, as we set that up and explored some really um, intense stuff here. And so then uh, module nine starts to really deepen that sense of the compassion itself, uh, which is brilliant um, and making it um, stronger. Yeah, so here we're starting to help participants deepen that compassion itself um, by facilitating our broader abilities to opening and tolerating um, emotional distress and motivational experiences. So we're setting people up with asking them to make, say, flashcards so that when they have times in their lives that they're struggling, um, they have something to go to. Uh, we're doing some experiential exercises, um, so directing compassion towards others and towards ourselves, um, as well as compassionate letter writing as well. So we're asking people um, to think of a time uh, in their lives where they're struggling with their bodies and how they would actually respond to that uh, from their compassionate self. And that's actually a very moving, um, very moving piece, that one, um, one of my favourites. And then so module 10, we're looking at compassion assertiveness. Um, so for me, it's like how to say no. That's my, my personal take of the um, compassion assertiveness modules. Uh, so to help people understand assertiveness and aggression um, are two different things and how assertiveness can be actually linked to strength and um, authority of compassion, um, setting boundaries, uh, to be compassionate for ourselves um you know what do I need right now well maybe saying no is more in line to prevent me from burnout so really being in tune with um ourselves and um what compassion assertiveness means to us uh, so in this module we're allowing individuals to express to themselves with confidence um, and not aggressiveness or being passive. So we explore those three differences uh, in some exercises here. Um, and we've got uh, the breathing exercises and re reaffirming the compassion itself as a self-identity. Um, then in module 11, there's the uh, compassion for others and forgiveness. So we're introducing participants in this module to being able to explore how to engage the flow of compassion for others, as well as forgiveness, um, and how the suffering, suffering from others can influence us and what we feel in relation to our body and what we do. Um, you know, maybe their comments about our eating or our weight in relation to family members. Um, no, you don't need that second serving and things like that. So starting to address those times um, of suffering which are received from others and how we can have compassion for others and um, forgiveness in those times too. Um, so in this one, we really practice um, exercises of perspective taking and empathy uh, as well as, you know, those um, 
larger group discussions and breathing exercises. And then finally, module 12, it's um, wrap up contact and wrap up context and reflection here. Um, so this one's we're revisiting the journey that the groups uh, come to and exploring the whole program again to remind those how far they have gone and actually what I didn't mention in module 10 we actually ask people to write a letter um oh, module 9 I think it is a letter to themselves to give back to themselves in week 12 so that's a very moving moment for um participants in receiving those words from themselves um and I don't know what those words are um that's all private uh, to them, but a lot of people have cried and been very moved by that. Um, so the aim of this one is to also let the group um, consider some preventative or emergency strategies here um, for future difficulties um, and envision what compassion would look like in the future and when at times we may struggle and what we're going to do with that. Um, so yeah, it's really set, setting ourselves up and sharing some um, guidance from the group of how uh, we might be able to manage that. And within this one, uh, there's some pair work on how to cultivate and strengthen our compassion uh, once the group finishes. Um, acknowledgement of the challenges, a uh, self-gratitude letter, um, and then some more um, compassionate imagery techniques. So we do our compassionate wishes uh, with this one. Um, going around the group and sending each other some compassionate wishes um, on their journey. So that is the 12, uh, 12 sessions. Ah, Alicia, that's brilliant, actually. That's yeah. a really helpful summary, I think, for, for all of us to hear just, just what, you know, 12 sessions of group CFT is, is all about. Yeah.